So my name is Dom DeMarco. I'm the president of the Cranbrook Educational Community. First, I want to thank you alums for all of your support, for coming back, for caring about this great institution. It, the alumni are very important to us. Uh, it's what keeps us going. It's what keeps this place so vibrant. Uh, and I, I can't thank you enough. I see many of you uh, pretty frequently, and then some of you I see sort of every five years. And um, I want you to come back as often as you want. So first, uh, a couple of introductions. I want to introduce Bruce Peterson. Bruce, where are you sitting? Bruce is the chair of the Board of Trustees of Cranbrook. So Cranbrook today is run by a, a group of trustees that have representatives from schools and the Art Academy and also the Institute of Science and some at-large trustees. Bruce is chair of that group. I think Bruce is finishing his fifth year as chair and uh, is my boss. So I have to behave up here today. And then Jameson William Felisky Jameson, please stand. Class of 86. I think Jameson has been on every possible schools uh, committee that exists today. Uh, she's also today, importantly, the chair of the Board of Governors, entering her third year as chair. Board of Governors of the schools has done just a spectacular job. Was my partner, uh, among, uh, as well as some others here, uh, in uh, the search for a new director of schools and, and played a really key role uh, in that effort. And uh, I couldn't thank her enough for her partnership. So thank you. So it, it gives me great pleasure, again, to welcome our alumni back to campus, and in particular, this alumni assembly. As I've noted before, while there is much activity in our campus during the school year involving more than 1,600 uh, pre-K through 12th grade students, ages three and a half to 18, I'm convinced that the energy level increases tenfold on alumni weekend. I love seeing so many smiling faces, hearing so many enthusiastic greetings, and enjoying the recollection of our returning alums from Kingswood and Cranbrook. On behalf of all of us at Cranbrook, we hope you come back often. Let me begin by congratulating Claudia Schutte and David Watson on their honorary alumni status. Uh, I think the two of them maybe danced a little bit too much last night, uh, and so probably aren't with us yet today, or waking up slowly today. Uh, you're forever connected with the Cranbrook alumni uh, that you have guided so well. Uh, and I also want to recognize Margie Brown of the, alumni, uh, of the Alumni Relations Office in receiving the Alumni Appreciation Award. Thank you, Margie, for all you have done for Cranbrook Kings for Alumni. I also want to recognize the generosity of schools alumni and particularly members of the Cranbrook class of 1968, who have secured already approximately $575,000 for scholarship. And with some gifts coming in today uh, from Kingswood alums, we know we will surpass that amount. We will move into the 6650 range because the money keep, keeps coming in. That certainly is a record uh, for all schools classes and uh, thank you so much scholarship is needed here at Cranbrook and you've really given exactly to the place uh, that will that will improve the education of generations of children ahead of us well done thank you so uh, we're here to recognize two of the many alumni who represent the very best of Kingswood and Cranbrook the individuals we honor today embody the enduring values of the schools, the qualities we teach our students, excellence, integrity, personal and social responsibility, curiosity and imagination, appreciation of the arts and for different cultures, critical thinking, and contributing to our global community. They also share something else in common in their own fields. Jennifer Sibley Clement and Jay Adelson both are rule breakers. Now, now, before you turn around and look for the security office, let me tell you what I mean. 
I gave an address to the uh, Horizons Upward Bound graduating students this year, and I offered them eight rules proposed by Harvard professor Francesca Gino that she asserts good leaders should break to become better. Of those eight, there were two new ways of doing things that particularly resonated for me. First, seek out new ideas, people, places, and things to find inspiration. And second, break the habit of seeking opinions or perspectives similar to yourself. Jennifer and Jay have embodied these contrary approaches in their lives and had great success because of it. In Jennifer's writing, she leads us to learn about different cultures of life, circumstances in a way that challenges our preconceptions. The powerful, understated quality of her prose and poetry often contrasts the grittiness of her stories. <coughs> Through this dichotomy, she operates, she opens our eyes to new perspectives and our minds to new ideas. Jay's experience as a serial entrepreneur defines someone who's always looking for the new and the different. I suspect Jay would be the first to admit that sometimes the new ideas or inspirations have not been successful. But I suspect he would also acknowledge that often taking a wholly different approach has in fact led to breakthroughs. And we certainly heard that yesterday in your address to the senior boys. Jennifer and Jay have another thing in common beyond their rule breaking. They're both doers. Jennifer's work with Penn International and previously with Penn Mexico has focused on press freedom safety. This is vitally important in today's world of fake news. Jay's work in this area of cybersecurity is also critically important to our protection and well being globally. The real life examples that Jennifer and Jay offer our students and all of us as rule breakers and doers reflect the essence of what Cranbrook Kingswood education should inspire. Congratulations to Jennifer and Jay, our 2018 Distinguished Alumni Award recipients. Let me start with the school's rankings. In list of criteria evaluating American schools, Cranbrook Kingswood is near the top of almost every one. Among the best private K through 12 schools, ranked number seven out of 1,869. Among the best boarding high schools, ranked number nine out of 264. Among college prep private high schools, number 12 out of 3,324. Among the best private high schools, number 18, out of 3,497. Among, among high schools for STEM learning, number 46 out of 4,400. And among the most diverse private high schools, number 203 out of 5,363. Within Michigan schools, Cranbrook Kingswood is the highest ranked in all but one categories. First among best private, uh, private K through 12, first among best boarding schools, first among best college prep, first among best private high schools in Michigan, among the best high schools for STEM learning, number one out of 129, something we're very, something we're very proud of, and among most diverse private high schools, number three out of 136. And then, there are the improvements of the campus, safety and security upgrades across the entire campus, boys middle school expansion, girls middle school, the building the girls middle school, the quad restoration, the oval restoration and turf field installation, Keppel locker room projects, Wallace Ice Arena renovation and addition, Kingswood Cafe, New softball and baseball diamonds, girls and boys. Tennis court improvements. Kingswood entrance plaza restoration. Kingswood roof replacement. K 
Kingswood Auditorium re uh, renovation, w uh, Winger uh, Gym restoration, Diana Courtyard out here, Diana Courtyard and Fountain restoration, Brookside Oriole Window restoration, Brookside Children's Garden, Brookside Roof restoration, Hoey Commons Room restoration, and Alumni Courtyard restoration, which is underway right now. These accomplishments and rankings and the capital improvements are certainly a tribute to Arliss and her leadership of Cranbrook Schools. But I would suggest that I think Arliss will agree that these accomplishments really are a credit to Kingswood and Cranbrook alumni who have made so many of them possible through your generous gifts. And I am certain that Arliss would say during her, her greatest legacy at Cranbrook is not the rankings or even the brick and mortar her greatest legacy is 47 years of students whom she's had the privilege of teaching and leading. 47 years of Cranbrook Kingswood alumni like each of you. Thank you very much for coming today. So I'd now like to introduce Wade Meesey. We're gonna go in order now, right Arliss? Okay, <laughs> Wade Maisie, uh, class of 76, president of the Cranbrook Kingswood Alumni Association. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, as Don mentioned, I'm Wade Maisie uh, and the president of the Cranbrook Kingswood Alumni Association. And one of the best parts of being associated with the Alumni Association is the year-end Alumni Association meeting, which really is a party uh, at a local restaurant where we invite uh, all the local alumni, many of the faculty and administrators. And this year was extra special. Sorry. And this year was extra special uh, because we presented uh, three awards this year. And the first award was to Arliss, actually it was a gift. And the Alumni Association um, presented her with the with a maquette, which is a small sculpture reproduction, uh, for those of you that didn't know that. Uh, and it's uh, the sculpture of uh, Pam Walsh's emerging girl in the uh, Kingswood Green Lobby. And uh, it is inscribed uh, with the sentiment of, uh, to Arliss, teacher, mentor, and friend. And I know that all of my fellow members of the Alumni Association and literally thousands of alumni and faculty and administrators share our sentiment uh, uh, for Arliss, uh, that sentiment. Uh, she truly is a great teacher, mentor, and especially a, a wonderful friend. Uh, another award that was presented that evening actually uh, was the Honorary Alum Award. And the Honorary Alum Award is only given in very rare occasions. And this year, it was given two times. And to qualify for this award, uh, it is someone who has demonstrated a significant interest, commitment, and involvement in the graduates of Cranbrook Kingswood over many years and made personal efforts to nurture and enrich the alumni community. The list of living honorary alums is a very short one. Arliss, Debbie Retson, uh, Del Walden, Betsy Clark, Frank Norton, John Winter, Kathy DeSena, and Charlie Shaw. The two newest members of the honorary alums is uh, Claudia Schutte, who has uh, been with the school for as long as Arliss, 47 years, and started as a math teacher in 1971, and I think has held just about every position within the Kingswood Cranbrook community. The second is David Watson, who is relatively uh, a newbie. He's only been around for 34 years. <laughs> and he was, uh, and he is associated with the uh, English department and the foreign language department. He also has been the uh, sponsor for the Crane Clarion uh, since 1989. So with so much uh, you know, experience leaving, uh, it's really going to present a hole uh, that will be very, very difficult to fill. 
but I hope everyone will join me in applause for uh, the service and dedication that these three individuals have given to Cranbrook. And I know we all want to wish them well in the next chapter of their lives. I had the pleasure of listening to Jay Edelson, class of 1988, yesterday at uh, the boys' graduation. And it was, it was a fantastic speech. He talked about power and integrity, the power to act, the power to break through societal uh, constructs when needed. And he also talked about integrity. Uh, he talked about the importance of integrity, and with it, really, there is no bounds for the success that someone can have. And I also, this is my subtext, he also talked about what it would be like without integrity, and it's basically, we're screwed. Uh, <laughs> both, both on an individual basis and on a societal basis. Um, but a little bit more about uh, Jay. He graduated in 88 and he went to Boston University where he studied uh, filmmaking and computer science. Graduated with uh, filmmaking with a concentration in computer science. And shortly thereafter, moved to California for an unpaid internship at Skywalker Sound, which is part of Lucasfilms of Star Wars fame. And the key word there was unpaid, so he ended up having to take other jobs, leveraging what he learned from Rich Lamb uh, to get some tech jobs. But there was this emerging technology, the internet, and Jay saw issues and uh, problems and also solutions. So that is what really captivated him during the uh, middle 90s. And in 1998, he founded Equinix. And I'm glad I have my glasses for this because uh, I have to tell you what Equinix does. Equinix is a company that pioneered internet infrastructure providing fast, reliable, and stable routes between different networks. And in doing my research, I found that it's now over a three and a half billion dollar revenue company with 6,200 employees. And Jay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I read somewhere and I was unable to substantiate this. But I understand that 90% of all the internet traffic touches an Equinex data center. A phenomenal achievement by, by Jay. Jay wasn't done there. He, uh, since that time, he has founded more than 12 tech companies, including uh, Dig, which is a news aggregator, and uh, he also founded Revision 3, one of the first forays into uh, web-based television. He is now involved in Center Electric, which is a venture capital firm, and he is focused on projects that build the infrastructure necessary to connect everything, or the internet of everything. Um, so that's, that's been his, uh, his focus uh, for the last uh, number of years. But he still has managed to stay connected to Cranbrook. Uh, two years ago, he came back and did a uh, seminar on venture capitalism. And it was very well received, and he still has communication with some of the students that participated in that. Last year, he came back for a reunion uh, to celebrate Rich Lamb's and Betsy Lamb's 40th anniversary here at Cranbrook. Uh, and he was the keynote speaker at, at that address as well. Uh, it was really enjoyable to listen to Jay yesterday. And his speech not only resonated with the students, but resonated with everybody there. And it certainly struck a chord with me. I too believe that integrity is the key to success. And I also think it's the key to happiness. Uh, and it makes me very happy to be able to present Jay with the uh, Distinguished Alum Award.
this is hard. Um, I hope it's okay. Um, I gave a, a very different talk yesterday to the seniors, and I want to share something a little more personal. Um, what Cranbrook, and I'm sure you all share, um, what Cranbrook really means to me. Uh, when I was seven, my second grade public school teacher, Mr. Turbo in <laughs> Southfield, he told my parents that I was severely emotionally disturbed and learning disabled. <laughs> For real. He questioned whether or not I should go to school at all. Um, and my parents decided to have it go for at least one more year. And my third grade teacher there, her name was Jewel Anderson. And I'll never forget her because uh, she saved my life. Um, so this teacher, she would read us chapters from Little House on the Prairie, and she'd teach us about humanity and caring and engaging us every day. And after about a month or so, she reached out to my parents and said she had to meet with them. It was critical as soon as possible. And my parents showed up terrified, thinking that this was it. <laughs> <laughs> the big ax was about to fall. They were sure I was getting kicked out. Um, instead, Mrs. Anderson explained that the problem wasn't their child, it was the environment. They needed to get me into Cranbrook. And that wasn't a question of like private versus public or getting out of Southfield. It was literally, specifically Cranbrook. Um, and my parents, who were, who were public school teachers when I was very little, they understood the value of a great education, but more importantly, they were worried about my self-esteem. Without really knowing much of the details about Cranbrook, they took a chance, and I ended up coming here with my sister Anne, who's in the audience. Anyway, what followed was like a rebirth. Uh, at nine years old, I had these enormous Coke bottle glasses and a terrible haircut, <laughs> and I was a walking target. Um, but at Cranbrook, every teacher, every single teacher was a Jewel Anderson, and every moment was about engagement and love. And even the other students, many who knew each other for so many years, from a kindergarten, I was in fourth grade, they accepted me. And, uh, and my foibles, and you know, last night I had drinks with, with Brad Hampton. He was the kid who actually walked up to me on my first day of school and took me out and said, hey, it's gonna be okay, and toured me around Brookside, and we're still friends to this day. And remember, this is, this is a, for me anyway, it was, it was incredibly, it's a homecoming to come back here. But the lessons that I learned, they weren't all in the classroom, um, they were about life and appreciation of life. In fifth grade, at the end of certain days, uh, at Brookside, I would, my mom would pick me up here at, at Kingswood, where my sister was at middle school, and I had this alto sax that I carried with me. And when you're nine, it's about as big as you are. Uh, and so I walked from Brookside to Kingswood every afternoon, lugging this thing in the fall, winter, and spring. And as you know, this walk, you'd go under that tunnel, by the old mill, and then you walk along the creek past these beautiful trees in, in the Kingswood campus, and something really strange happened during these walks. <laughs> so, you gotta understand, it was, it was uh, of course, a, a huge change, but, but I saw things I never saw before, and there was this swan, which again, seemed enormous to me at nine that would always be there at the mill when I got there and then would slowly follow me on the water as I walked down the path each day. Now sure, now I get it, right? People probably fed the swan. So he probably was just following me as a habitual opportunity, but uh, try to imagine this. I'm nine, maybe 10, I'm by myself. I had spent my days before Cranbrook in a sterile, crowded, and chaotic universe where I was ostracized, alone, and the problem child. And not only was my world completely changed on a day-to-day -day basis, along with what is arguably one of the most beautiful landscapes imaginable, but I also had my own freaking giant swan following me <laughs> every single day, who I named Ned. Well, so after having Ned follow me for months, I finally had the courage to approach him, and he was you know, beautiful. I'd never seen one of these before, so peaceful looking. And I held out my hand, and you can guess what happened next. <laughs> Ned bit the crap out of my hand. Uh, this just, it's just, 
It's not just one oddball experience. My life here was filled with things out of a storybook. Handbook wasn't my school, it was my entire childhood. If nothing ever happened to me in my life of any consequence after I left here, my experiences I had would more than fill up countless novels. And it hurts me that I couldn't share the same experience with my own children here, but I, but I hope I was able to use what I gained to help them uh, and raise my own kids. And I remember every detail. I remember every ginkgo leaf, every icicle on a copper roof, every chick hatching in Mrs. Hoxley's incubator, every school dance, which by the way, the first time I ever danced with a girl was literally standing in this spot of this floor <laughs> right here, Heather Waddington. Um, you know, so my kids, they wonder why I know these things. I have this subconscious attraction to arts and crafts and serenade design, and why art is as valuable to me as science, and why I encourage my kids to know their teachers, which they think is a weird request, no matter what the subject, and where I learned the dexterous skill of navigating a field without getting goose crap on my shoes, <laughs> and why sometimes silence outdoors is a treasure you must not squander. And yeah, that swan's bite. <laughs> so I'll just close by saying I am, I am beyond honored. I don't even know how to process. I'm so grateful. I never really felt distinguished at all <laughs> until now. And I'm just happy to be home with you. So thank you. know how you knew Ned was a boy. <laughs> um, uh, good morning, my name is Lori Frankel and I'm the president-elect of the Alumni Association, a class of the member, a member of the class of 79 and the parent of two current students. The Alumni Association had a very busy and successful year. Uh, supporting the mission of the school and engaging and connecting with alumni. We have been very fortunate, as you heard uh, Dom say, to have Margie Brown on working with us for the past 18 years. At the spring annual meeting that Wade referred to, we presented her with the Alumni Appreciation Award. So if you see her, she's in the Green Lobby right now registering people, please congratulate her and thank her for all her years of service. She will be leaving us at the end of summer and she'll be very busy this weekend because this is her big, big thing. Uh, Sunday, there is a brunch that will be dedicated to Margie. I believe there are still some tickets if you'd like to come. It's, I understand the food is amazing and it's a great event. So she's in the Green Lobby. Please make sure to, to see her. Yesterday, I had the privilege of listening to, to both of our distinguished alumni speak. And I would like to talk to you about our distinguished alumna, Jennifer Sibley Clement from the class of 1978, who addressed the girls yesterday at their commencement ceremony. And it occurred to me we really could not have picked a, a more perfect person to address the girls that were graduating. Uh, Jennifer was born in Connecticut, moved as a, a baby, which she corrected me yesterday, uh, to Mexico City, where she still lives today. She came to Kingswood as a boarder for her junior and senior years. To, to get a good American education. She's a well-known author of several acclaimed books, and her books have appeared on numerous international best lists. And her, the reviews of these novels include words such as essential summer reading, magical, brilliant, engrossing, powerful, and must read. Her novel, Prayers for the Stolen, is a New York Times editor's choice, was a Penn Faulkner finalist, winner of the Grand Prix de l'Ectrice Lycénée de L. Apologies to Mr. Meehan, I'm botching that French. <laughs> and winner of the Sarah Curie Humanitarian Award. She is fearless in her choice of topics, tackling such thorny subjects as women's rights, inequality, sex trafficking, and gun violence. She invests time and energy into her research, and much of what she writes about is inspired by real life events. 
She believes that powerful writing can be a force to change the world. As Elena Panatowska, who won the 2014 Cervantes Prize, which is the highest prize given to a Spanish uh, language literature, wrote, and I quote, let's hope that Prayers for the Stolen changes the condition of Mexican and Central American girls who are stolen and trafficked for sex. The impact of Prayers for the Stolen could be fundamental in the life of women of our continent. Jennifer was awarded a Guggenheim Fellowship for her novel, Gun Love, which was named by O Magazine, that's Oprah's magazine, as the best books to read, April 2018. Her books have been translated, as you heard, into 30 languages. She's the first female president of Penn International, which was started in 1921 as an organization that advocates for human rights through freedom of expression and literature. Fellow alumni, faculty, friends, and guests, I am pleased and proud to introduce our distinguished alumna, Jennifer Sibley Clement. Well, I hadn't actually planned to tell a little story, but now I will after yours. Um, thank you so much to everyone for this award. I'm deeply honored. So before I say some other words, I want to just remember Madame Paus, who was my French teacher at Kingswood. And one morning I woke up and I'd had a dream that she took me to the world of spirits. And um, we visited with my grandparents. And I thought, God, this is a really funny dream. So the next French class I had, I said, oh, Madame Paus, I had this really funny dream about you. I, you know, that you took me to the land of spirits. Well, she went completely pale, freaked out, and it turned out she was a psychic spy in the Second World War. I then became her good friend and would go to her house where she could make spoons bend like Uri Geller. I promise you, this is true. <laughs> so, um, I'm honored to be here and to have my work recognized in such a special way. I haven't been back since my own graduation in 1978. And as I was a boarder, Kingswood was not only my school, it was also my home. I haven't returned, but I've come back in my mind many times. I've thought of these halls and grounds, and in 1984, went to an exhibit at the Met in New York City called the Cranbrook Vision. There, I looked at furniture from my Kingswood bedroom, exhibited behind a rope, and watched over by a security guard, stood excuse me, uh, and watched over by a security guard stood my desk and chair painted in the original light green. At that desk, or one just like it, I wrote papers on Greek mythology, Gustave Flaubert, and the Brownings practiced for my SAT exams, as well as writing poems. And since there was no internet or cellular telephones, and we needed you, Jay, for those times, it's true, I also wrote love letters to Cranbrook boys, which we'd be, we would leave on trees or under stones. <laughs> At that desk and chair, I sat and looked out the window, watched the grounds change shape and color over autumn, winter, spring, and like everyone else, I wondered who I was. However, beyond the unusual beauty of the Kingswood Cranbrook environment, what I have returned to over and over again was that for a time I lived and studied in a community of women. And as I was a boarder, I also had an extraordinary family of sisters. From that time forward, the intelligence and camaraderie of women, which I experienced in close proximity, has been with me and has worked to, to form a large part of my life and work. This is true for both my literature and activism. As I work in the world defending freedom, freedom of expression and the power of telling stories and being a witness, 
I live with great sorrow as so many women in the world will never learn to read and write and tell their stories. I am the president of an organization that was founded almost 100 years ago. Penn International was born out of the idea that no matter how different we may be from one another, whether it's the color of our skin, the God we pray to, where we were born or where we call home, that we have words, language, and literature in common. Our faith in words stands as a tool to inform, to be a doorway to new and unexpected worlds, to challenge tyrannies, and to seek justice. As president of Penn and the first woman elected, and as a daughter of Kingswood, I have placed the importance of women right in the center of the organization. Kingswood and the intellectual sisterhood I found here allowed me to move in the world with a deep awareness of privilege and responsibility. I've known I was to come here for many months now, and so it's made me imagine the young woman I once was, walking with the woman I am now, the past and present selves meeting here. And I asked this Kingswood student I had been, so full of strength and youth, if she could recognize who I am today. What I do know is that neither she nor I could ever have imagined this day and this celebration, and we are both deeply grateful. Thank you. Director of Alumni Relations and one of Jennifer's classmates. The class of 78 is filled with pride. We're so, so proud of you. And we were, we were in seventh grade during Arliss's second year here. And, uh, <laughs> and I just, I know that this audience is ripe for this. We could not let her get out of here without having a little bit of fun or at her expense. So we've got a little short video for you to enjoy before we let her take the podium here. So we're gonna get that started now. We have, we owe special uh, debt of gratitude to Lindsay Aikens Hefter from the class of 1980. She had 12 senior May students working on that this spring. So many thanks to the group who helped pull that off. Well, we know uh, it had to be a member of the class of 78 that was responsible for that. <laughs> and, it, and as alums, you might be also thinking, so this is what happens during the course of the school day, you know? <laughs> all those administrators and staff members who uh, contributed to this. Uh, there's an evil genius in Susan Post, I have to say that. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, thank you, Dom, for your kind words. Um, I wanted to go last because, um, one, I want to get through my remarks and I can exit quickly if, if need be. But, I want to take this time to not only welcome you to the campus, but also thank you for the many, many years that uh, you have supported the school, uh, you have supported the students and faculty, and uh, you have supported me personally. Um, this weekend is the efforts of so many people that I also want to acknowledge the entire development staff. Would you please stand and, and be recognized? They work <laughs> And they are, uh, in their own way, geniuses for, for putting this particular program uh, together. I also want to thank uh, the entire community. As you walk the campus, I hope that you feel uh, that we are being good stewards of the, the Booth legacy. Uh, the campus looks, in my opinion, the best it's ever, ever looked. 
And that's again the work of many people behind the scene. Not only alum who, uh, alumni who uh, support the school in different res uh, restoration and, and pers uh, preservation, but also the entire community who work in terms of its planning and execution. Uh, I would also be uh, remiss not to thank uh, Jamie particularly as Chair of the Board of Governors. Jamie, can, thank you very much. I have to pause here for just a minute. I had a, a, a thank you dinner for nine of the board chairs that I worked with. And um, it said in the independent school world that if that a, a head only lasts through four board chairs. So when I got to my fifth, I was really happy. <laughs> but uh, with that, uh, I had the really pleasure and privilege of working with two of my former students. And uh, to have that <laughs> Be your boss uh, is really kind of uh, uh, special, and um, I, it's also very special that I find that the president of the Cranbrook Kingswood Alumni Association and the president-elect are also former students. So I feel like I'm stacking the deck a little bit. Um, and about a third of the school's board has also been my former students, and I just have to tell you just a really quick story. So. Uh, at one point, the, the board was concerned about um, dress code issue of, of things that we worked through. Now, why this was particularly funny is some of the board members were the worst offenders uh, when I was here. And as they are seriously trying to get the school to address this, I you know, answered the questions. And then after the meeting, I said, if you ever, ever do this again, I said, I will describe your behavior that I have absolute recall about. <laughs> and by the way, I saved all my grade books. So if you want to meet about that too, uh, we can talk about that. So it's been truly a privilege to be able to not only uh, teach your students, but see uh, the wonderful achievements and accomplishments that they're able to, to have over these many years. And I feel extraordinarily privileged uh, in my role of the trust that I was given um, to lead this phenomenal school. And I do hope that you take time to look through this beautiful tradition magazine about uh, and read about the, the different faculty contributions. But they uh, follow a long line of faculty uh, who have uh, nurtured and cared for you. So um, I just feel very, very privileged uh, to be one of the people to be in a, a leadership position. I also want to add my uh, thanks and appreciation to the class, first of 68. Peter, where are you again? Peter, will you stand up? Um, and is Ralph here as well? Is Ralph? No. I want to thank Peter. Um, Peter and I uh, have a long-standing history of kidding one another. And uh, when he said to me, Arliss, our class is going to do it, raise the most money of any reunion class, I wasn't sure if he was joking or not. But Peter, you have done an extraordinary job with Ralph and the rest of your class in terms of supporting uh, the school and to add uh, the Kingswood uh, part of this to raise money that's over $600,000 for scholarship is just really incredible. So thank you for your exceptional leadership. <laughs> One of the, they, they've asked, and of course I never found, the speaking points is to acknowledge the, the class of 78 for also their participation in support of the school and its, uh, and its annual fund. Now the reason I smile about this is, shall we say the class of 78 participation? That is like a perfect metaphor there in describing the class. They're, shall we say, very active in their, their engagement with the school. So I'd like to personally welcome all of you back. And uh, I understand you're going to have a great party tonight. <laughs> Also, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, I also want to tell you how excited we are 
about a very special gift that the school um, has received this year, which is going to focus on wellness. It was a two and a half million uh, dollar gift by the uh, by Bob and Ann Aikens. It's, it's called the Bob and Al, uh, Ann Aikens Wellness uh, Gift, and it's going to support the different initiatives in the school. And as far as we know, it's the largest. Uh, gift uh, an independent school in the country has has received with this particular focus. So this will be very exciting, and that's under the leadership of Charlie Shaw, who has worked with different aspects of it. So um, as as we build for the future, there are many many exciting things, and this will be just one of them. But I would just uh, also add that I, at Senior Awards Night. I was really uh, moved, and you know, sometimes you can isolate things that happen in a school. But three of our graduates are going to three of the military service academies, uh, the West Point, uh, Air Force Academy, and uh, the Naval Academy. And that, to me, is extraordinary. Not only are they going to the Ivies and to the University of Michigan and the other uh, wonderful public Ivies, but they're also making a commitment here. And to have three of your graduates, uh, it was a very profound um, ceremony that happened at the Senior Awards Night. And I think you should be aware of that, particularly in terms of our two speakers who I sincerely want to congratulate for their messages uh, to, to our graduates. Uh, Jennifer's message was empowerment of women, and Jay's was, but power without integrity accomplishes nothing. And I wanted to tie those two things together, what I observed at the Senior Awards Night. This is a very special school. We're doing wonderful things. You, our alumni, uh, give us such a great sense of pride. and. Um, I want to thank you.